Welcome back to Outdoor Adventure Training. My name is Mikey Bell, and today we're bringing to you a difficult and fun ski-specific workout. This is the Steep and Deep Squats. This is taken directly from the Black Diamond phase of our powder prep program, which is a 12-week periodized program designed to help skiers and snowboarders improve their muscular endurance, their joint mobility, their cardiovascular performance, and overall set you up for an injury-free and very enjoyable ski season ahead. If you're looking to add structure and accountability to your training regimen, head over to our website at outdooradventuretraining.com, check out all of our training programs and the powder prep program, see if it's a right fit for you. All of our programs come with a one week free trial and just a great place to start if you need extra guidance and motivation getting going. As I mentioned, this is an advanced workout. It is difficult. If you have not been training regularly or following along with all of our other videos, I would discourage you from doing this one today. But lucky for you, we have tons of follow along ski specific workouts on our YouTube channel. Check it out. Start with some of our green workouts and advance to the blue before returning to this super challenging but very effective workout for the steep and deep squats workout you are going to need a few pieces of equipment first of all you could perform this whole thing with body weight and do just all right however because we're in that black diamond phase we're really trying to build that muscular endurance and having any form of external resistance is amazing i have a ton of medicine balls dumbbells kettlebells and plates to choose from if all you have is a dumbbell it's gonna work. If all you have is a kettlebell, we'll make it work too. We'll show you ways to mix it up and accommodate your needs. Also, this is not a Bozu specific workout, but if you do have a Bozu ball, like I do, we will probably integrate it at some point. You are also going to need some form of a box or a step, even a chair will work. I'm gonna be using my foam box. This is not necessarily for box jumps, although that will be an option within this workout. This is just for a sit to stand squat exercise that will be in the first round of the workout. You are also unfortunately going to need a wall. We're gonna be doing a weighted wall sit towards the end of this workout, which I'm a little bit nervous about, but it'll be great. We'll get through it together. And you're gonna just need some space to jump around, especially for the early on plyometric warm up routine. That is more than enough of me talking. Let's open the Outdoor Adventure Training app and dive into today's workout. So we've moved through all the green workouts in the early on phases of training, blew through all the blue strength endurance workouts, and now it's time for the black diamond phase. Yes, I know the red diamonds. There's no black diamond emoji. Take it up with Apple. We're gonna be starting off with a pretty in-depth dynamic warm-up, mobilizing all the ankles, knees, and hips, everything we're gonna need, following up with some single leg plyometrics. And then we're doing two different circuits, three times each, that is gonna quite frankly challenge our muscles. And <laughs> again, if you have not been training up into this point, I would definitely discourage you from just starting right at, like this should not be your first workout of the season, hopefully. We're starting off with ankle circles. I'm just balancing on one leg and just working on that articulation of the ankle, trying to trace big circles. Great way to warm up the lower leg. We'll go ahead and switch directions here about at the halfway mark. And also all of these dynamic exercises, the warm ups that we're doing today, great way to warm up before skiing too. Do a few on the other side. Knee circles. Okay, knee circles, all we're doing is tracing big circles with the knee. So I'm pushing my legs back to the side, forward, over to the other side. And this is just a great way to kind of feel how your body is today. When you're pushing out to the side, you should feel that in the external rotators. We're pushing forward into the quads, over to the other side. Switch directions. Okay, we got some walking lunges next. Give yourself some room. Striding out, I'm also gonna integrate a reach into this. So my back leg on that same side, so in this case my left, reaching up and over. Back to center, stepping up, sinking down, up and over. 
Great way to stretch out that anterior chain. If for any of these stretches you feel like you need a little more time, feel free to pause, integrate as much as you need. You can never be too warmed up for a workout. <laughs> Honestly, I do a little warm up <laughs> before I film these. Just so I'm ready to go. Butt kicks, here we go. Just working on kicking the heel up to the butt. Starting to get the heart rate going. Getting the quads, the hammies, feet and ankles warmed up. Hopefully you're well fueled for this workout. Meaning you've had a meal in the last couple hours or at least a small smack, snack, not a smack in the last 30 minutes or so and well hydrated. Have your water bottle handy. <laughs> okay, hammy twist. I love this dynamic stretch. All I'm doing is reaching down one hand towards the floor, bend your knees as much as you need to for this one. And I'm rotating up with the other arm before replacing the hand, switching to the other side. Great way to stretch out the hammies and the spine. Keep breathing. We're not holding any of these stretches for any amount of time. Trying to stay dynamic. Hang in there. <laughs> Necklace is all over the place today. You're done in three, <sighs> Side lunges. Side lunges. Done this many times on this channel. Sliding out to the side with my front leg, keeping that front heel about in line with that back toe. Sinking down. <sighs> Again, we're not holding this too long. Switching over to the other side. You could certainly just work continuous reps on one side to help open up those adductors. I do like alternating back and forth, just trying to stay a little active to kind of mitigate the chances of holding it for too long. Really, as long as it's less than 30 seconds, you're gonna be okay. But again, I think it's good to just keep it moving. Okay, we got side shuffles next. I'm staying low, pushing over to one side, going back the other direction. Okay, great way to warm up cardiovascularly, warming up the legs, stay low. If you're working in a small space like I am, just going back and forth is great. You should start to feel this in the glutes, in the quads, working in that frontal plane, staying low. Okay, nice job. We got inchworms next. I do this in almost every dynamic warm up. getting the hands on the floor, bend your knees as much as you need to, walking out to a plank, and then small steps on the toes, keeping the knees locked. You're gonna walk in as far as you can, which might not be very far, <laughs> that's all right. Walking it back out to a plank for repeating the process, small steps on the toes. You might only get to right here before you need to step it out again. Amazing way to improve mobility in the posterior chain and just get things working. Get a few more here. Sometimes I'll throw a couple push-ups in, even though it's not a push-up workout or upper body workout. Great way to just warm up, get into the mode of exercise. This is our last dynamic stretch. Oh, okay, short rest. Hopefully your heart rate's elevated. Mine is, we're gonna be talking a lot about breathing today. I'm gonna get this out of the way for now, for the bounding. I might move these weights as well, <laughs> just to make sure we got plenty of room to work with. So we're working on single leg bounds. On this channel, I've done the single leg isometric load. We've done a lot of single leg hopping, We're kind of integrating all those things into a full bounding motion. So we got 40 seconds on each leg 
I'm gonna work just the right leg first and I'm just gonna come back and forth, okay? So I'm loading and I'm working on all the mechanics of keeping the knee externally rotated, popping and absorbing and coming back up to center, okay? If you have more room, certainly do a few of these in a row. Again, we're just warming up. Load, pop, absorb, stabilize. Excellent technique. I'll do one facing you. So when I land, I'm really focusing on what my knee is doing. We're gonna talk about that a lot today. Love talking about that, keeping that knee externally rotated. A few more here, load and pop, absorb, absorb. Okay, you should be feeling that. Glutes, quads, hammies, load and pop, switching legs. One more. It's not about how far you jump. I care much more about how your landing is. Couple more going back the other way. That load and pop, we're getting a lot of that power recruitment from the posterior chain. Okay, short rest. Next, you're doing lateral bound, okay? So, we're gonna go back and forth. So, meaning one time I'll go to this outside leg, this direction, and then going on that same leg, I'm gonna jump medially. But same thing, I'm just working in the frontal plane now. So again, start small, you don't need to jump super far. Load, pop, absorb, stabilize. Load, pop, absorb. <laughs> Stabilize, it's okay if you mess up, right? This is why we're here, we're practicing. So when you're skiing, it's second nature. And hopefully you could see how this exercise might be beneficial for skiing. Even though you got two skis on your feet or one snowboard, both your feet on the same thing, you're always dominating with one leg. One more. Right away to the left leg here, same thing. All I'm doing to jump laterally is really just thinking about throwing my arms rather than straight ahead, just a little bit out to the side. So, absorb, absorb. Really work on that landing. A few more here, team, come on. You can really try to push it with how far you're jumping. <laughs> Don't get disappointed if it's not very far. Okay, nice work. Two more here. Well, one more, two times. Multi-planar, okay? So I'm gonna start off facing forward and I'm gonna make a 90 degree turn in the air, all right? A lot of ankle stability, a lot of hip stability. Involved. I'm going to start on the right leg, load, pop, turn, stabilize and balance. We can reverse it. I can start this way and then that way. So like that. All right, again, load, pop. One more time this way. Okay, let's mix it up. I'm going to turn medially now. So load, pop, turn. Woo! Stabilize, going back. Feeling those hammies firing big time. Nice work. Right away to the left leg, facing forward, 90 degree turn to the right. Nice, same thing going back. I cheated there. If anybody saw that, extra credit for you, I turned early. Okay, so catch yourself here. Up, turn in the air. There we go. Turning to the left now. Nice. Turning to the left again. Woo! <laughs> Not as strong on that side. Good work. That's it for the plyometric warm up. Hopefully, you are warmed up. We're ready to get into the first circuit of three exercises although it is four sets because the last one is single-legged. 
and you will need your box, bench, whatever you got. Okay, we're gonna start with weighted skier squats. Go ahead and grab a dumbbell, a medicine ball. I'm probably gonna start light and slowly increase throughout the workout. We're staying low, moving side to side in a squat. Hmm, let's start with the 20. 10 seems a little too easy for a black diamond workout. Okay, so my feet are nice and wide. My toes are maybe just slightly externally rotated and I'm getting low, okay? This is the key, pushing that knee out, staying low, over to the other side. Okay, this might feel pretty easy at first. I promise you, <laughs> by the third set of 60 seconds, you're gonna be cursing at me. That's good, that's kind of the role of a trainer. I like getting cursed out, it means I'm doing my job. Staying low, I'm focusing on keeping my eyes more or less on the same level. Camera's a good accountability buddy for that. Staying low, team. Just like you're shredding down your favorite run on your favorite mountain, it's gonna take a minute. You gotta stay low. 10 seconds left, come on. A few more. Keeping that knee externally rotated. Nice work. Okay, short rest. We got power squat jumps next. I believe it's the waist deep leg workout on this channel. We were doing squat jumps for strength endurance where we're just working on speed and quickness and that re repetition. Power squat jumps, we're going for power. We're going up, okay? So I'm gonna load, power up, jump as high as I can. Absorb, back to center. Load and power, we're going for maximal explosion. Explosion up, load, pop. Soft landing, okay? The real key here is I'm reaching triple extension. So extension with the hips, knees, and ankles, arms are up overhead. Load and pop, baby, let's get it. If this is too much, just do some air squats. Get up there, come on. Last one. <sighs> nice work. We need our box next. I gotta take this necklace off. This was gifted to me in Nepal by an amazing woman in a local village, Buddha eyes. But unfortunately, I don't wanna hinder your workout experience. Okay, single leg sit to stand squat. Right leg first, left leg out in front, sitting back. Whole foot is planted on the floor. This is a pistol squat, okay? So if you can do a full pistol squat, which <laughs> I struggle with sometimes, go for it. But otherwise, I'm just trying to get down, tap, back up. I'm certainly not getting down and chilling out. This is black diamond phase, baby. We're working here. Load, squeeze those glutes. A lot of glute activation. Focus on the knee. I'll show you on the other leg what I want from the anterior view. But notice, I'm not really rocking back or minimizing. A few more. This other leg, we just need it out in front. Last one. Woo! Short rest before switching legs. You should be hard, okay? Adjust your box height as necessary. If it's super easy, you need to lift yourself up off the floor or lower your box. If it's way too hard, put a pillow, raise this height. Okay, so from the anterior view, really paying attention to what the knee's doing. The tendency for 99% of the population is, whoop, knees caving in or on the way down, the knees caving in. Really work on external rotation, outside edge of the foot pushing through the whole foot and the heel. And I'm not perfect. I'm doing my best. It's all we can ever do. You should be feeling it. I'm freaking feeling it. A few 
few more. Oh. Try not to rest. We're just trying to tap and come back up. Oh. Feeling this in the glutes. Oh. One more. Woo! Nice work, team. Okay. Short rest. Grab some water if you need it. We're gonna do it again. What do y'all think of our new skis hanging up here? Courtesy of one of our partners, sponsors, Rocker Ski Rack. These ski racks are amazing. They are called Rocker Ski Racks because they don't interfere with the natural rocker of your ski. They very easily catch on there and hold your ski sleek. Comes with a bumper plate, super easy to mount up. All of our training clients and our programs get 20% off with Rocker Ski Rack. So if you weren't already sold, maybe that'll get you. Okay, grabbing the 25 pound medicine ball, stepping it up. Wide legs, getting low, side to side. Here we go. Keeping that weight out in front, whatever you're working with, dumbbell, kettlebell. The point of the weight is yes, to add resistance, but more so core engagement. Really trying to get full extension with that leg. Woo, it's getting toasty in here, team. 57 degrees, I thought I could get away with Merino. I've been fooled once again. Oh. Got a nice saying in the mountains, be bold, start cold. Meaning you're gonna generate heat when you start moving every time. Stay in low. A few more, come on. One more for good measure. <sighs> nice work. Oh, foam roller down. <laughs> okay, power squat jumps again. Again, we're working on up, up, up. And if you want, let's do it. Let's throw some box jumps in here. If you got a box, we're gonna replace the power up to a landing on the box. Here we go. Load and pop. Load up. <sighs> Soft landing, like a cat. <laughs> Super quiet. Load and pop. If you can hear my landing, it's still too loud. Here we go. Full extension up. Notice I'm finishing the rep, finishing my squat, getting that full glute activation. I have been stepping down, and if you're more advanced, you can jump down and absorb. People shy away from jumping down and for good reason, but if you have great mechanics and you're confident and you can absorb, that's what we're after, load and pop. I might step down, <laughs> save my body for the rest of this workout so I can demo the best I can for you all. All right, we got sit to stand squats. I'll mix it up, show you from yet another angle. Squat. I'll go lefty first this time. <sighs> Chest up tall. Squat. Sitting back. <sighs> Woo! <laughs> Definitely some balance involved. And if you want, let's do this. Grab a 10 pound med ball, 10 pound dumbbell, something super light. Keep this out in front. <sighs> Watch how that changes your mechanics. <sighs> and the activation. Chest up. Nice work. Switch sides, take a break. Whew, thank you all for showing up today. That's half the battle, just being here. Even if you're not quite 100% or you're a little tired, whatever the reason, just gotta show up. That's how results are made. 
Okay, switching to the right leg now. I love this medicine ball. Sitting back. <sighs> Excellent glute activation. If you are struggling with this, and it seems like it's more than just a strength thing, it's probably because it is. Mobility Ooh, is a huge variable here. Primarily calves, Ooh, hip flexors. Those are the two big ones that are gonna prevent range of motion. We got mobility routines on this channel for all of that. Fun stuff. <sighs> Try to stay on that leg. Tap <sighs> up. <sighs> Keep breathing. <sighs> One more. Woo, nice job. Feeling those glutes, man. <laughs> Quick rest. Shout out to another sponsor. We got Fulcrum Poles. These things are freaking amazing. Super lightweight, adjustable grip, fixie pole. I mean, these, I can't wait to ski with these. Great for backcountry skiing. Also great for the resort too. Love mixing it up with the poles. Uh, outdoor adventure training athletes also get discounts if you're enrolled in the program. Just another perk. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna stick with the 25. Weighted skier, skier squats, feet wide. Let's get it, staying low. We're almost halfway done with this workout. Chest up, stay low. Come on, don't cheat yourself. Think about how good those first turns are gonna feel. They're gonna feel effortless because you put the work in. Oh yeah, nice job. If you're doing the power squat jumps, keep it rolling. I'm gonna go back to the box jumps, they're feeling good. Let's take it up a notch. Bump it up to 20 inches. Or is this 24 inches? 24 inches, here we go. Load and pop. The higher that box gets, <laughs> the more important this is. Load and pop, here we go. Load, absorb, up, oop. Not the cleanest rep, let's refine it. Here we go. Nice. Soft landings, full explosion, everything up. Focusing on getting those hips up. It's not just lifting the feet, it's a full body pop from the hips. Love box jumps for ski conditioning for very obvious reasons. One more, here we go. Oh. Woo. Okay, sit, stand, squat. Single leg. I'm gonna stick with this 10 pound medicine ball. Loving the activation I'm getting with that. Right leg first this time. I like alternating. Come on, Mikey. That was a lazy sit. We wanna emphasize the stand to squat or to stand squat, <laughs> not the sit. Chest up, oh, oh yeah. Focus on that knee, don't get lazy now. 
We're just getting started, team. Ah. Oh. A few more. <clears throat> Last one. Oh, yeah. Feeling that. Switch into the other leg. This is a long workout. 45 minutes. I don't think I said that in the intro. I'm trying to hook people in. <laughs> if I say 45 minutes, people are gonna click. Next. But the reality of it is, those 20, 30 minute workouts are amazing to get started, give you a good baseline to work from. But ultimately, 45, 60 minutes, 90 minutes, depending on the the domain you're working under, that's where it's at, baby. You can only go skiing for 30 minutes? I didn't think so. All of our programs also have full cardiovascular programming, different heart rate zone training. A few more here. One more. Three, two, Woo, nice job. Okay, 40 second rest. We can get this box out of the way. We're switching up the routine now. New circuit, good job getting that one done. Get a drink of water. I certainly need one. We got goblet squats, deep split squats, which is just as much about mobility as it is strength and a weighted wall sit. Goblet squats. Goblet squats. If you can, go heavy. We're trying to build that strength. Since this is the first round, I'm gonna start with the 25. Last two, I'm using the 50. Chest up nice and tall. Feet, hip, shoulder width distance apart, sinking back. Your glutes should be activated. <laughs> That first circuit is all about glutes. Really this whole workout is a lot of glute activation. These next two exercises after this one, maybe a little more quad dominant, which should be a nice little break. <sighs> Make sure you're clearing the hips, that subtle tuck of the tailbone to get that full hip extension, glute engagement. <sighs> That's what it's all about. <sighs> I know we haven't used the Bozu yet. Next round, it will come. <sighs> Mostly on this next exercise. So I would encourage you, if you've never done deep split squats or ATG split squats, doing body weight, I'm gonna grab a light dumbbell here. And by light, I mean, 25, 30 pounds. Okay, so extra long lunge stride, wider than you think. Starting with this front leg straight, I'm working on driving the knee forward and down, keeping my whole heel loaded on the ground. I'm not coming up into the toes. So you might only get to right here. You can also lift the heel on a wedge or a block if necessary. Driving that knee. Chest up. If you are holding weight, hold it on the hand, on the side of the leg that's forward. I'm way up on those back toes, driving forward. Back to center. Just as much about mobility, you're probably feeling it in the calves. Hip flexor on the back leg. Some balance certainly involved. Amazing exercise, I love this. <sighs> Switching legs, whether you're a skier, snowboarder, trail runner, hiker, mountaineer, this is an outstanding movement. Sorry, other leg. I'll show you from this side what this back hip is doing. 
So again, lift that heel. If you're really struggling with range of motion, put a block under there, something that's a book, an inch thick, drive that knee forward. Notice my shoulders are still more or less over my hips, meaning I'm not leaning forward with my upper body, really trying to stay stacked through the column. Core is engaged, really getting low. My knee might be touching the ground, but it's certainly not weighted. And then same thing with the knee, keeping it out. Little adjustment here. Chest up, shoulders back. It's a great way to strengthen the VMO, vastus medialis oblique, that medial quad muscle, the inside quad. And if you've ever gone skiing, you know that sucker's burning on a long power run. <laughs> okay, nice work. I'm gonna get this out of the way. Weighted wall sits. Hopefully I haven't hyped this up too much, but this one won't be easy. I'm gonna grab a 25 pound plate. I'm gonna set it on my lap. Okay, find your wall, sinking down into this nice 90 degree angle here. And the plate's a really good way. If you're really into it, have a level here, make sure that sucker's flat. If you push in your toes too much, your quads are gonna burn out quick. Really try to get into those heels. Find your happy place. Get those glutes engaged. Focus on your breathing. You got this, dig deep. <laughs> Almost there. Nice work, set that plate off to the side. Woo! Legs are on fire. That's what we want, baby. Okay, so for the goblet squat, a couple things you could do. You could do them on the bozu ball or with the same weight, <laughs> sweat mark on the wall, love that. Or you can increase the weight. I think for the sake of demoing, I'm gonna go ahead and use the bozu. Got a lot of bozu lovers on this channel. Want to honor them. Thank you so much for subscribing. I'm going to do goblets with the 25 pound medicine ball on the bozu. Be very careful. Use a wall if you need to. My favorite way, one foot in the center and then slowly widen out. I wouldn't say I'm a master of the bozu, but I've been using it for longer than I'd care to admit. So I got it pretty down. Working on keeping the bozu flat. Oof. Amazing activation. We do have full Bozu workouts in the powder prep program. <sighs> Options to integrate it as you feel necessary. We also have TRX workouts in there, dumbbell workouts. It's an amazing program, though that might be a biased opinion. <sighs> Core engaged. Oh, nice work. Usually to get off, I ditch the ball, lean to one side, step off, no falling. Okay, for the deep split squat, I'm gonna flip the bozu. We're gonna work it on the round side. I'm still gonna grab my 25, 30 pound dumbbell, holding it on the same side, forward leg. Getting that foot right on top, sinking down low. I love this variation. Gets so deep into the hips. Back up. Get low, team. Come on. If you don't have a bozu, you are missing out. However, it's not a critical tool. You can still train effectively without bozus. That wall's still wet. Get low, 
This is really gonna challenge your ankle foot stability. Great balance. Couple more, get low, drive through the whole foot. Last one. Nice work. Switching legs. And if you are using the Bozu, you certainly don't need to use weight for this one. It could be tough. Again, I'd say I'm a advanced Bozu practitioner. Chest up, sinking down, adjust as you need. This should be challenging. Black diamond phase, remember? Whoop. Stay balanced. Oh, great quad activation on that front leg. Get low, come on. One more. Finish strong. Woo! All righty. Okay, bows you out of the way. Weighted wall sit. Might need to repaint the wall. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. Grab your weight. You certainly don't have to use weight. Whatever you got, whatever you got to give, give it. Find that happy place. I'm sticking with the 25, man. Whew. I wanna live to train tomorrow. mid-November, got freezing temps, it's getting cold, snow in the mountains, ski season's coming, it's dumping in Alaska, Colorado's got a big dump, ski season's coming baby, come on, this is why you're here. Hang in there. Woo! Nice job. Ditch that plate. Boy! Final round, team. Look at that. Almost done. We got goblet squats. I really love the Bozu variation. I also really love increasing the weight. So why not do both? I'll stay lateral for you all. I think that's a more important view on the Bozu squat. I take that back. I'm gonna go anterior. <laughs> squats. Just so you can see, keep me accountable. Make sure my knees aren't caving in. Okay, 50 pounder. Again, advanced Bozu move here. Don't try this at home without the help of your ski buddy, a pole, something of that nature. Chest up. <sighs> Heavyweight, 50 pound kettlebell. Last round. Hang in there. Super good core engagement. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Let's apply the same methodology to the deep squat. Deep split, squat. split squat. I'm gonna do that by still using the Bozu. 
I'm gonna go with two dumbbells, doubling the weight. Sorry, quads. You're gonna hate me for this tomorrow. Good thing cold plunging exists. Been hitting that hard every day. Outside of mobility and meditation, I believe, cold plunging is way up there in effective tools to repair the body and the mind. Repair and prepare. Oh, yeah. Get low, push through the whole foot. Again, if you don't have the bozu and you're doing this on the floor, it's all good. That's an amazing variation as well. Try to add some resistance. <sighs> Legs are feeling it. <sighs> oh man. Lost focus. Okay, I'm gonna be switching legs here. Hopefully they're feeling it. Oh yeah, there's a mark on the wall. <laughs> it's all right, we'll fix it. Get deep. If you're loving this workout, if you're ready for ski season, hit that subscribe button. We would definitely appreciate all the support we got new workouts dropping every week. Whew, stay on that back foot, Mikey, come on. Lot of stability involved. Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh, I'm gonna get one more clean rep here. Here we go. <sighs> nice job, team. Final set. Best set. And this wouldn't be outdoor adventure training if we didn't make it harder. Ooh, 25er. Let's go for the 30, the dirty 35 pounder. Final set, baby. Here we go. I might regret this, but I'll do anything for you all. Get in the zone, let's get it, come on. Focus, visualize success, whatever that looks like for you. It might be big days in the backcountry. It might be skiing with your child or your parent at your local ski hill, it doesn't matter. We're all training for a reason that's much bigger than ourselves. <sighs> Dig deep, do it for them. Come on team, dig deep, squeeze those glutes. Woo! Oh yeah, nice job. You crushed that workout. That one should be hard. No sugar coating it. That is a difficult workout. Your legs should be feeling it, but you're gonna be stronger and a better skier because of it this winter. If you love this workout, even if that means a little bit of a love hate, Please subscribe to our channel. We're dropping more of these every week. Like this video, share it with your ski partner that has probably waited too long to train, but needs this now. We are super grateful to have all of you on our channel. If you want more of these types of workouts delivered via our mobile app, check out our training programs at outdooradventuretraining.com. We got tons of options and more and more programs coming in the next few months. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Once again, we're super grateful to have you here. Keep praying for snow and we'll see you next time at Outdoor Adventure Training.